So welcome everybody. Welcome to Hot Song Podcast. Uh, today is July 11th, 2024, and the topic for this evening is self-sabotage. <clears throat> so um so why self-sabotage? Because I was looking at the list uh, like a while ago, I was asking, you know, all of you what it is that you would like to to you know for us to explore more of and self-sabotage was one of them. And I actually looked at a few of the other items that I written down. And there are a few things that is kind of um, related to self-sabotage with the, you know, the other one, which is kind of related is, you know, healing the inner child because there is a bit of healing the inner child um, when you try to deal with self-sabotage. And then there's also something about, um, integrating or working with a shadow side. So that is really part of working through the self-sabotage. And um, also keeping keeping balance because why, how come we, it's not easy for some people to stay balanced is because there are um, these elements within themselves that they haven't quite um, come to terms with yet. So. It's a little bit related to self-sabotage. So because uh, self-sabotage kind of is um, the, the big umbrella of a few of the other things that you guys have, have mentioned that you would be interested to explore more. So I thought, okay, um, let's start exploring some of these because I, I, I somehow... Um, have the, I have the experience that when I start to do more of the, the, the work with releasing, um, you know, the, the, the karma and the, um, you know, whatever it is that's not mine from the soul, I find that these things start to um, also help. It helps with, um, I would say, letting go of self-sabotage as well. So I thought, okay, you know what? You know, as a, a follow up from talking about more than a month of so energy, let's let's kind of give the so energy a rest. Not that you know, not that you know, I'm stopping about so energy. Like I'm still doing so energy work like every day, and I encourage for for those of you who. You find that um, it that work resonate with them is to keep doing it, um, if not daily at least regularly. Because if you, the more you work with the soul, your soul energy, you actually strengthen it to the point where it's going to be there for you even when you're not in meditation. So that really is where I would like to be at at that point too. So, however. Um, let's kind of switch here slightly is to talk about self-sabotage. So when I start to think of, okay, when I'm, how, how, how to explore self-sabotage and, um, a couple of things started coming in is, so let's actually just look at what is the self that we're talking about first, because Self-sabotage, if we are not even clear on what a self is, then, you know, how do we know that it is self-sabotage? Maybe it's it's just part of the soul journey and and um, we're just mislabeling it. So that's why I want to talk a little bit about the self. And um, this is something that I think I've mentioned a long time ago about, you know, what actually makes up as a, a self, me, it could be someone else. So we, so let's start from um, what I know first, what, what I have experienced first, and then um, we can go from there. So my experience is that there's a body. So there's this body that you all can see. And then there is the, um, energetic part of me so some called soul 
there are many names to it, but I'm going to use the word soul. So, so that, and I'm going to kind of define soul um, the way I understand it. So that, uh, you know, we are clear on what it is that I am referring to. So for me, the soul is really the um, energetic part of me. Um, when I say me, I, I mean Winnie. Winnie Louis, which is uh, my 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 name, um, and so Winnie Louis is the life that I've created with this body, with um, the was so far in my in my life's journey that is what I've created in this in this playground, and this life, this Winnie, is actually. Compared to the soul, it's very different because Winnie is a has you know experiences, has done things that you know um, know certain people comes from a, a certain background, and I have uh, siblings. I have um, my mom is still alive, and I have a you know, sister and, and and a brother. And I have friends, I have all you um, listeners here. So those are um, those are part of the life of Winnie Louis that I've created. So, but who created that? That is in Winnie. Um, that is really the soul. Bef but before there is a body, before I have this body, and before I've created this Winnie that you um, seem to think that I am in this moment. Before that, there is a another part of me, which is what I call the, um, the, the spirit of me. And um, the spirit of me compared to the soul of me is the spirit is way bigger, is essence. It has no physicality attached to it. It has no time. It is beyond time, beyond space, beyond this um, playground that we are on. So the soul is, I'm sorry, the, the spirit is what some people may have called it as being um, a monad, meaning is, or some people have also called it an oversoul as well, meaning that it is something that exists outside of this reality. That it's something that is um, much bigger than what Winnie Louis knows. Because the, the, the spirit has always been and always will be. Whereas... I'm pretty sure I won't be here for forever. <laughs> I'll, I'll be really surprised if I'm here for another, you know, 50 years or maybe even 30 years. I would be surprised. So, so then, um, so that is the spirit. And then what the, the soul is, is the soul is a, not a subset. Okay, a fractal. Uh, I think a fractal of the the spirit would be a better um, description of it. Why um, a fractal is better than a subset is that a fractal um, means that it's even though it's not the same as the spirit, but the soul has a lot of the um, similarities with the spirit so a one one spirit can have many fractals many souls all living parallel lives and um i'm going to i'm not going to go into too many details but you know um a an oversoul can have many divisions many divisions and as and I am, you know, here, being here in, in, on Earth at this space time, I'm much further down in the, the, the pecking order. So 
So the soul that that is animating this body is really a fractal of the spirit that is before the soul comes here, this the spirit would have kind of um planned out what it is that soul is here to do. Um maybe not the details, but there is a a blueprint of what it is that um, the soul is supposed to be here, and and then this, and then what the soul does is then the soul is um, you know look at the the blueprint, and that that is created by the spirit and say okay, sure that sounds interesting so let's let's do it and then incarnates into a body, meaning that it um, creates a story that is going to um, come through a set of parents and be born, because on earth, um, there, there are certain rules of the playground earth where we can just, I can't just, you know, materialize out of thin air in order to play here. I have to I have to create a story. So the story is, you know, I have a mother and a father, and for whatever reasons, they come together. And you know, nine months later, <laughs> hello world. Um, you know, I the the body starts. So the body is. So what is the body then? The body is a. It's a program that is the interface between the soul, the environment, and also um, other souls, other other players that are that can interact with us in this environment. So that's what the body is. It actually allows us to experience um, to have an experience on earth and be able to interact with all the other souls that are here simultaneously. Um, and okay, so that's what the body is. And the body, the body that we have is really sophisticated because the body is not um it's not something that is static. It's not like you you have a body, it's, or I should say it's not like a, a piece of clothing where you the body is born and it never changes. The body changes with every thought that we um, that the soul decides to concentrate on, to focus on, and it also changes according to our interaction with the environment and for according to our interaction with other souls that are playing this uh, alongside us as well. So. This, this, the body is so amazing. And what the body is, it actually, um, it takes the, the blueprint from the soul and it starts to attract um, different materials in this environment so that we can start to grow the body. And so that's why we come here as, um, when so we come here as like, you know, when we were conceived, we were just two, just a, a cell and a, a, a sperm, an egg and a sperm coming together. And it gets all that information and start to grow into a baby or something that resembles a baby. And it starts to uh, come out from um, the mother's birth canal. And then um, depending on how it interacts with the mother and with this playground, it starts to grow until at some point we become who we are in this moment. So I just wanna stop here now because I've kind of touched on what the spirit is, what, or at least what I, um, I use the word spirit as being the, the, the oversoul or the mana. And then there's the soul, which is, Really, the um, a, um, a fractal of our spirit, and then I've talked about what a body is. Um. Okay, and I kind of touched a little bit about. Okay, so the 
So when we say the self, it's actually a combination of the, the soul and the body and, the, um, and, and also the environment as well. So questions, comments so far? <laughs> Have I lost you all? Yes. A question here. Um, so the, the soul evolves, but not the spirit, right? Spirit doesn't change, but the soul evolves. Okay. The spirit. Um, I would argue that the spirit not evolve is not the right word for it. The spirit is always um, revealing itself. It's always learning. Okay, so the spirit does change. The does spirit not. does change, yes. Okay. The spirit does does change. But spirit is um, eternal, but not the soul. So the um, so what do you mean by eternal? Um, the the soul is a fractal of the spirit because it is so as we grow or, or as the soul grow it will get to a point where it will want to merge back into um, so the way it is is that there is a spirit and then the spirit splits itself out up into um, first layer of souls. And then the first layer of souls split itself into the next layer and then the next layer and the next layer. And then so at some point um, when the soul has enough experience, it will get to the point where, you know, the soul is done its, its own exploration and it gets to a point where it cannot learn until it comes back together hmm. and to synthesize. Because the um, thing is, we are all one. Right. Like you, me, Tatiana, you know, everybody that is here and, and also everyone that is not here. We are actually all one. We are all splinters or fractals of a spirit. So each of our, our experiences is we are all looking at you know life on earth right now from a very from you know very different points of view. I look at life a little differently from what you would look at life from each mm -hmm. one of you here. At some point, though, we, the soul would want, actually would get to the point where it is not interested in living this way anymore. We would come to a different um, layers where we're not just interested in living a life. We actually want to create earth. We're not, we don't just want to live on earth and play on earth. We actually want to learn enough so that we can go out and create our own playground. Hmm. So does it mean the soul dies? No, it does not really die. It just, it transforms. Okay. It, it merges, it transforms, it changes directions. So that's why um, when, I, when I look at the self, I find that at first 
my understanding was, okay, there is a soul, my soul, my soul is doing this and, um, but it's not. Mm, but, you know, the more I, um, the, I would say the more I understand what energy is, the more I realize that um, what I think of as a soul is not really a soul. Mm. It's something else. Um, it's like there is, the soul is really a, um, a subtle body because it's a subtle body it can morph into something else mm. and that you know at at my level uh, at this level of understanding my brain capacity <laughs> cannot even fathom yeah but we're just just um like constantly listening to other people talking about what a soul is right so other other philosophers talking about what a soul is and also you know cross-referencing that with my own experience you know how you know the experiments that i have kind of um played with to understand what a soul is i find that you know what um the self, what I think of as Winnie right now, um, is like Winnie is actually a fractal of my soul. My soul is so much more than Winnie. And Maybe your spirit, your spirit? My, no, even my soul, because the same soul could have lived a completely different life. Like even okay. now, if I choose to, I can live a completely different life. Okay. It's, it's that, you know, do I choose to live a completely different life or not? Because I have created a, uh, a persona for myself. Like each mm -hmm. of us has done that. But that does not mean that this persona, this Winnie Louis you know, you all know that I know right now is the only thing that I can be. I am capable of so much more. We can have parallel lives. <clears throat> That's what you're saying. I'm not even thinking of parallel lives. I'm just, I'm just grasping that, you know, I comprehend that if I want to have a very different life, what it is that I needed to do differently. Like I can actually think of, okay, if I want to be, have a completely different life, all I have to do is let go of certain beliefs. And well, I- Like move to Hawaii or someplace else and become somebody totally different. That's what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's <laughs> So that is what the self is. The okay. self is the self is actually um, so much has so much more flexibility. It is just that you know for is so um, so for whatever reason. Um, like I choose to be whomever it is that I am right now. Mm -hmm. That does not mean that, you know, this is the only person that I can be. This is the only way that I can be. Mm -hmm. That is, I don't know. I don't know whether that like everyone would think of it that way. I, I have not talked to everyone yet. However, you know, it's conceivable that um, like, it's conceivable that there may be some people who think that there is no choice. They have to be that way. They have to do things a certain way. They have no choice. I'm, I'm quite sure that there are people that think like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Can I ask you another question? Sure. Um, you said that we have this body because we need to experience, uh, you know, the, uh, to socialize with other souls. But why the soul of holy people, they, they left for key, for mountains, to be, to separate themselves from other souls? If they need to socialize with more people. It really depends on what their soul wants to do. Um, usually, okay, there are there are Tibetan monks or other monks that for them, in order for them to um, see beyond the programming, like the normal, usual programming, they have to take them, they, they feel that they have to take themselves out so that they are somewhere like in a, in a mountain or somewhere that, you know, no one, that is very few people around them that frees their um, mind to create something very different. Okay, so um, that's why there are monks who meditate in caves and they can get to the point where they can start to levitate. They can actually, you know, their hands, they can put their hands through stones and be able to create handprints into stones because they have changed their own understanding of um affecting their environment so it can be one way so for in if if you want to do something that you know everyone else believe they can't do then you have to find um you have to kind of isolate yourself in order to achieve it why because if I go out in the middle of the road, you know, king and wherever it is that I am, and I put my hand on the pavement and I create a, an imprint and people around me see that, it's going to shatter their world. And for me to do that, I can't do that because number one, um, I... I have to have permission because there are really very, a lot of karmic um, repercussions for me to break other people's point of view. So in order for you to force or to, to materialize something, to manifest something that is going to shatter everyone else's um, everyone else's belief system it's you have to have agreement and um we are not at the point where we can do that yet do you understand what i'm trying to say yes sure okay so usually Even on a, so sorry, go ahead even on our level, it's uh, not easy to socialize with everyone. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, that's why there is... That, that, I think that's part of the reason why we don't have, you know, really advanced civilizations that, you know, or what we call aliens. If, however, I don't think of the word aliens is really a misnomer because they could have been living on earth all along. It's just that they don't, their existence is very different from ours or very separate from ours because um, there is there is this universal law that you, know, you, you can't force your um, way of living 
on someone else without their permission, without karmic repercussions. So that's why um, in order for someone to do that, you know, that's that's why when when we kill somebody, we actually we change the, the life of someone else or at least one person. Like if I go out and kill someone, I change that person's life. I I I impinged on their freedom. So yes, there are going to be consequences. So we can't, or I should say that there will always be consequences on one person trying to impinge their will on someone else. And we are we're learning that now. Because we have actually lived through a period of time where it is very normal for um because we are playing in the victim aggressor, we we played in the victim aggressor um paradigm where it is okay to go out and impinge your um like to put your will on someone else, to enslave someone else, to affect someone else. So that was that was you know the 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 three D that we kind of lived through, and now we are changing the 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 playground to something very different. So that's why we are learning to let go of our own tolerance. So we no longer want to be victims. So those are some of the programs that um, we are here to work through in this transition time. Okay, so other questions? <clears throat> yeah. Uh... <laughs> When we say um, so, when when the body is formed, it's the soul that comes in to the body to make the life, or it's or to do whatever it needs with the body. So where does the spirit come in then? Um, sorry, can you repeat that question again? Yeah. Uh, maybe I missed a little bit of your earlier talk uh, between soul and spirit. What What is the difference, actually? And what's the meaning or okay. reason? Okay, so when I, when I say spirit, I'm referring to um, the over-soul. I'm referring to the higher level. So the soul is really um, a fractal of the spirit. Because that's why I'm defining my terms. Um, because what I would call so other people would call manat. Uh, sorry, what I call spirit, some some other people has called it uh, over soul or call called uh, manat. So for me, a spirit is, when I say spirit, I'm referring to the over soul. I'm getting all mixed up. Uh, so the, so it's like the soul has got different levels? And the soul is... Um, is the, the soul is the, um, the what's the word to say? It's really the first level soul. It's really the soul that is animating this body. I'm totally that... lost. <laughs> okay. Um, 
so when when we say you know I have I I am a soul what what do you what is your understanding of what does that what's your understanding of that to me I'm still thinking about the old way that we were saying that the soul has uh, wants the experience and that's why it goes into different bodies right yeah um so, i have a different understanding then, now so the way so I, that is wrong so you're saying that is not correct i'm i'm saying that there is something that is when we say a soul we are thinking of actually more of the we 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 kind of thinking of it more like a body that there is the soul is very definitive and it is not the soul actually has a lot more capabilities that we haven't even scratched and we are you know in the the, the, in the fifth dimension, that's where we actually explore more of, because in 3D, we're exploring more about physicality, whereas in 5D, we're actually exploring more about the ability of the soul. So mm -hmm. the soul, there is actually so little we know about the soul right now. Okay. We think of the soul as being, you know, something that is like a body, but it is not. It is totally different there it is formless it has attributes but because it is a subtle body it's um we we actually um especially we've actually come out of the the a negative um 3d scenario uh, um so we've come out of a very restrictive version of 3D. Like other versions of 3D in a, on other playgrounds are not as restrictive as, or not as difficult as it had been on Earth. I mean, this Earth is, it's really, um, we went through a very dark time or dark in, in that it is, um, it does not allow the soul to come through much. There's so much programming, so much controlling. Every time or, or a lot of the times when the soul starts to you know, come out more and evolve, then those people are killed off. Mm -hmm. So there's been so much, um, I would say, you know, Every time when there is any you know, um, big step up, then those people are just um, derailed, either killed off or being tortured or being um, suppressed to the, to the extent that that's why we, it, when we are going through this uh, transition now, it's, um, we are seeing a lot of these things being played out again so that we can let go. So um, the soul actually does not have as defined a, uh, as defined as we think of. So when we think of the self it's um the self actually has so much more freedom it is just that in we we've been in an environment where the soul is kind of um being put in a closet um and not just one closet but it's it's like a russian uh, set of russian dolls there's so many layers and layers of um, dumbing down. 
okay. what we know of as the soul is actually um, so much more powerful than we have any idea of right now. And, and that's why um, we our body is shifting so much. It's because you know the soul is actually it is time for the soul to come back up and to play, to really play and to learn to be infinite. Does that when the when the memories we say of past lives and all, where is that? Coming in. Um, is that stored in the soul? Is, or? Yeah, that is the soul. That and, is part of the... But we, we think of the soul as let's say this cup. Let's say this cup. But it's not this cup. It is um, just a form. How should I think of? It's like um, it's a pattern. So it's a pattern. The soul is a pattern. Pattern. Yeah. How do you think pattern? It's a pattern. It's a very complicated pattern. Um, the soul. Okay, at the back, you see the my background. There are layers and layers and layers. So, we we think of the, the soul as that, but actually, um, the soul is connected with the environment, which is another layer. You can think of another layer as a different color. You look at it. So. And, and then um, there are, for example, you know, I'm Chinese, so there is a layer that is a Chinese layer. So which has like, all of the other people that has ever um, decided to play the Chinese game, their energy would be in that field. Okay. So my soul would sit in that field. It is not that field, but it um, has linkage into that field. And I live in Toronto. So then Toronto would be another field. And then, you know, my age group would be at one field. And then um, we are at 2024, the, the year 2024. So 2024 is its own field as well. Wow. So, so we actually layers and layers and layers. Um, my soul, if my soul is goes to a different planet, it will be completely different because my soul is just one or, or a few of these layers. But when, when it's put in a different environment and it's playing with other different people, different themes, then it would be so different. A soul, what I'm trying to say is a soul is not a static thing. Right. It communicates with so many other fields, and each time it communicates with a different field, a uh, field of energy, it would create um, a different pattern of communication. So, so is. But it still has memory of the past. It does. Yes, because so everything you, that the soul has experienced, it is being stored. So will it adapt then, just adapt to the different situations? Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. That's what flexible. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is very flexible. Yeah. So then where does spirit come in? So the spirit, what I think, what I um, name as a spirit is really um, the portion of me that is beyond this game, beyond this experience. And 
there is a, and then when I think of the spirit is really, you know, so there are, um, let's say, there is the spirit may be playing in, I don't know, millions. I, I don't know like how it is, um, how big it is. The spirit is really the, what some would call the highest, highest soul or, or the highest vibration soul, meaning that is much higher in terms of consciousness. Okay. That is what I would call spirit. And then you were talking earlier about monks. Uh, why would they want to choose that life, like to be isolated, to be... How are they helping humanity? Like... They are actually um, keeping alive the... Oh, they the so humanity um because humanity like has been suppressed so much right so a part of a fraction of the 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 the, the earth population has to keep that um soul energy alive has to they so those are the the souls that have signed up to um, explore the souls the, the richness yep. of the soul mm. so that it is all written in the akashic record so that you know the um, akashic record is available for everyone else on earth that is living on earth, has ever lived on earth, has, um, so everything we do, yes, we, the soul has a, a copy of it, but because the soul is also, um, part of our soul is also working with, like in conjunction with this playground as well. So whatever we've done, whatever our thought patterns is available for everyone else that is on earth. So when we are raising our vibrations, what are we doing? We're trying to reach deeper we into the soul? We are actually setting a, we are actually just setting um, a, we're actually just putting it into the Akashic record. We're setting an example. So the other people who have, um, so it's kind of like, you know, when you go on YouTube now, there are lots of people having different blocks. This one would say, oh, I built a house with, you know, a, um, with wood, with, you know, I build a house with brick. I build a house with, you know, just these containers. I build a house. So they're just doing things for themselves. However, it's kind of like putting it on YouTube, whereas our when we um, grow our consciousness, we're putting it into Akashi Record. It's available for everyone else that you know when they are ready to expand their own knowledge, they would be able to tap into that. So they we be. The people that are growing the consciousness that are really working on their soul energy, they are growing that field so that you know it's it's there for other people to tap into when they are ready for it or if they are resonate with that. Mm. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Getting better. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So when Menon asked, uh, what is eternal, both spirit and soul is eternal, there's no actual death in that. 
is there's no actual death, correct? Yeah. It's a transformation. So my understanding, meaning that I've read it, it resonates with me. However, I, at this moment now, I have no recollection whether it's, I actually lived through that or not. So my understanding is that, you know, we are all living different lives. We are all, you know, creating as we are. <clears throat> we are actually all contributing to this, you know, galactic YouTube channel so that, you know, it's available for everyone else. And then at some point, I don't know how many millions and millions of years later, when um, our soul has, you know, kind of graduated and start to move back into um, up the channels through to the spirit, then we, when we look at, um, so there are two processes. So I would go, I would have access to all my, you know, all the different parallel lives and all the different incarnations that I have. And I would kind of integrate all of that wisdom. Okay. So that is the seventh dimension, I believe. <clears throat> That's when we go and view, because we have lived you know, millions and millions of different um, scenarios and we and we kind of get to the point where we look at all of those we integrate all of the learning we absorb it and then so we kind of become our own the mastery so it's a mastery and then once I've done my own mastery um, the next point is to for all of these um entities to come together so that I will have access to every other spirits um their own mastery as well. So then that's another level of mastery. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the point where <clears throat> we get back to one because we all, you know, we right now we kind of just um all doing our own thing but at some point in I would uh, I, yeah at some point we will all come back together and that's when we get back to you know zero point when you know everything is said and done and everything is integrated and absorbed and then we kind of have a period of rest how long? Who knows? There's probably no time. Because when we get to there and all of a sudden we say, hey, what about if we try that? Mm -hmm. And then that's when we go and do it all over again. So we create, we integrate, we go back to being one and then we have another idea. What if we tweak this? And then we go out and we splint it off into many, many facets of ourselves to have fun, play, integrate, and then we come back together. So it's like we move out and then we come back. We move out and then we come back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that true? I can guarantee you. I don't know. I'm just saying that you no, know, that that sounds like fun to me. Like I would like to do that if I were if I were the the a a creator, that would sound like fun. So but to keep changing. Yeah. To keep changing, yeah. That would sound so you wouldn't you wouldn't want to be in the peace. It would be, becomes boring again. <laughs> <laughs> um, you wouldn't know. <laughs> or at, at least I would say I wouldn't know because um, when you're in the body, like when you're experiencing this life in the body, how, how can I say what I would or would not enjoy when I am 
not limited to this body, not limited to this space time. I wouldn't know. It's, you know, I would like to believe that I'll be free to choose whatever it is. So who knows? So when we say that uh, we're getting help from aliens, uh, the bad word, like uh, they they don't have much form, yeah. They they also are different. We just because we cannot imagine what they are, we just make a picture of what we think they are, right? Okay. So aliens is a very big term. I know, I know. It's a very vague term as well. So um, there are different aliens. There are some aliens which, you know, are, could probably be the ones that actually, you know, created all of this play. Mm -hmm. And then, so... And then there are some aliens, maybe it's just us, but in a different body. So, you know. So when people say there are aliens, so that means uh, they have seen them or they see a form of it. Because Cornelius always says that he doesn't see you as you see yourself. He always sees everybody as a beautiful person or gorgeous. Or he calls everybody gorgeous. So. Yeah. That's because he's, um, he's relating to you from a different point. Because um, so when you are, when you get to a point where you um, have integrated more of your own, uh, I would say you, you moved more out of duality. You don't think of things in terms of, you know, good or bad anymore, then, mm. you know, then everything is beautiful. We are the ones that decide, you know, whether you know something is good or bad, depending on whatever um, beliefs that we hold. Experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. Belief basically comes from experience too, right? Whatever we experience, or also a little mm -hmm. bit of conditioning from childhood, like what is yeah. right, wrong, Condition. yes, bad, good. Yeah. So. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, let me just. Even though he doesn't have memory, he has still a lot of emotions. Like he can get very emotional. Well, um, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. If he has no emotions, then he won't no. be as effective. It's a good thing to have emotions. Um, it's not a good thing when emotions have you. Yeah, right. That's the difference between having emotions than to be had by your emotions. So, mm. two different things. Okay. Any other questions before I yeah, continue on? Yeah. I, I know it's uh, it's a, um, kind of exciting. Okay. So, so I've talked about. Um, what I think a, a body is, a soul, a spirit, um, touched a little bit on, on what self is. So when most people say that, you know, we sabotage ourselves, that we self-sabotage actually is something that comes from, um, more from the e ego's point of view is, we self-sabotage. Yes, we definitely do. And um, one of the ways to understand more about why we self-sabotage 
is really to look at why we are here. And um, so we have this soul and then and the body coming together to play. And also there is a, um, I don't, I've mentioned it before, but I just want to remind everyone that we are in a transition period. And some would call this an end time. Um, so, but you know, it's actually not an end time because an end time is, there is no end. It's just a transition. We're just ending one kind of um, play. And then once it's ended, meaning that we kind of, um, gotten our fill of playing that way, then we would transition into another way of being because we are the soul does not die. Um, and the body has been conditioned to believe that it needs to die. However, the body um, has a lot more flexibility than we have experienced it until now. Body is, our body is actually very sophisticated um, piece of technology. And we can actually do so much more with the body. It's just that the body has been kind of traumatized for quite a long time now. So that's why we are the, I would say, when I say we, I mean the soul. Each of our, our soul is actually assisting the body and um, taking care of the body and to teach the body to start to wake up from its own um, abilities, its own possibilities. And that's something that we will start to discover more of the, the magnificent capabilities of our body. For example, there are people out there that are you know, practicing breatharians, meaning they don't need to, you know, or, or they don't um, need to eat too much or at least eat regularly. Um, they've trained their body to just rely on prana, meaning um, energy that, that the soul can take in to replenish itself. And not everyone is there, of course, only, only a, a small fraction of the, you know, the human population is doing that. But those small fraction, does not matter how small it is, as long as there's one person out there doing it, it's already setting an example or putting it into the, the, the collective Akashic Records so that anyone else at any time should we want to have that experience, then they've created a, an example that we can go to look at and see, you know, how can we adopt that practice? How can we improve on it? And how can we do it a little differently to have more fun? So that's what we are doing now is to start to um, play with all of these capabilities of the body. And um, so because of the times we're in this times of transition, that's why you see there's so much chaos, seemingly chaos. Now, why? It's because everyone is um, trying to complete or resolve their, um, the patterns that is holding them down. So, so that's why the, 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 the topic of self-sabotage is coming up 
it's because we are um, we are not really sab sabotaging ourselves. It's actually we are um, discovering what the self sabotage can help us do when we look at it from a positive point of view is the self-sabotage, where we think of as being self-sabotage is actually the, we are trying to discover the, the part of ourselves that we don't even know is there. Something that we have adopted, a belief that we have adopted that is um, has been so, I would say, so sneaked in that we um, don't even know it's there. But when we try to go out and try to create the life that we love, and then we all of a sudden, um, because something is, there is a belief within us that is not lined up to us creating the life that we actually want to experience. So when we don't know that there is um, a stone there that, or a wall there that is blocking our way forward, we invariably trip. We run into that wall and it becomes, um, it looks like it's self-sabotage. It's, it's actually just ourselves letting us know that Hey, if you want to go there, then you better look at you know what is holding you back. What is the 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 wall that is in front of you that you can't see, or the look at you know the you know the big stone that is right in front of your foot that is tripping you every time you try to go in that direction. So that is what self sabotage actually is, and. We don't always know what that belief may or may not be, but we do know that there is something there that is tripping us up. And um, one of the ways that I find is to really understand that there are two forces when we when we try to create something, creation, the process of creation has two forces, at least two forces or I should say two major principle. One is um, order. One is order, which is the building. So it's what we, is the, the principle of building things. Um, for example, you know, just uh, when we want to build a house, we build the foundation and then we put bricks in, depending on um, what kind of material you want to build your house from, then you build it, you know, bit by bit from the ground up. So that's normally, that's how um, a, how we build something, okay? But then that's, that's part of the creation process. But then there's also another process that's at work as well, and that is the destructive process as the destructive principle that is so destructive principle is and the creative or the organizing principle they are opposite forces the, you know, the organizing is you know when you are in good good health then you know your body is strong then and you do enough for your body to build it up then you know you your body becomes stronger and stronger and stronger but if you don't do that then the other force is the destructive force that comes in the destructive force is um you know if you don't exercise enough then your muscles atrophy then your your muscles would, would not work as well and if you don't um, keep up your body, don't don't do the maintenance to your body. If you don't, you know, cut your hair, then your hair will get longer and longer. And you don't brush it, you don't take care of it. It will be all tangled. And then you know, then that's that. If that's exactly the look that you're going for, then excellent. But if not, then you better 
do the things to maintain it, to um, create the experience that you actually want. So that's what the destructive force is. is or another way is, is chaos. There is order and then there's chaos. So these are two forces that are natural forces that is always um, within the body as well. That's why the body has a mechanism for nutrients to come in and then a mechanism for waste material to go out because those are really um, what needs to happen in order to maintain the body. So understanding that there are always at least two forces going on and um, it's really about balancing those two because we are life we have to juggle so many things so you have to watch what it is that you're growing and also watch what, are, what the things that are chaos Chaos is not bad. Chaos has a different um, function. It's like, you know, going to the bathroom, you know, um, releasing yourself. It's not that. You need to have that. And um, chaos is not bad. If there's no chaos, then nothing ever changes because chaos is really the, the force that tears things down. And when you are trying to create something, um, there is a time to release. There's a time to tear down. And then there's a, an effort that you need to use in order to build up. And because we are playing in this environment. So this environment is not just for us, it's for everyone else as well. So the force of chaos is there to make sure that if you build something, but you, you know, you build a house and you have no, and, and once you build it, you don't put any more effort in it, then According to what the um, what really is your intention is that okay you put your effort into building something but now your attention is on something else so whatever it is that you're not looking at it will start to break down so that someone else can come and. Um, create on top of yours. So, you know, human beings don't like that. We say, okay, it's mine. I owned it. I created it. It's mine. And they don't like to let go. That's just the ego does not like to let go. But, you know, life is about change. It's not about being static. So that chaos element is just the element to that you have to balance so that you need to know how to um, distribute your attention so that the things that you want to maintain you always have to put some attention to it in order to make sure that it is um, being maintained and then there will always be the element of chaos that will come in to put a curveball in your life so that you can rethink, so that you can um, flow with the time rather than trying to hold on to everything you've created so that nothing ever gets changed. Because life is about change, it's not about staying exactly the same forever. So that's why these two forces, chaos and um, order, happens so that it can naturally take care of the things that you don't put your attention on so that you know new things can come in and be created to serve the greater good.
and um, self-sabotage is when you're when you're not looking at and when you're not able to balance the, the order and chaos elements within your life, then it can look like it's a self-sabotage. However, we think self-sabotage and think of it as um, natural order is trying to show you some things. It's trying to let you know, okay, you're trying to create something, but there is an, a misalignment there. That's why you're not getting what you want. Instead of, you know, beating yourself up or beating someone else up is to really look at, okay, so what did I miss? What um, is hiding underneath all of that? That's one way of, I would say, letting go of the idea of self-sabotaging, actually using self-sabotage as a an opportunity to assist yourself in releasing what no longer serves you. So any uh, comments, suggestions? Yeah, but how to release what no longer serves? How to release that self-sabotage? This is a question. Okay. Um, the easiest way I, I can think of is really to go into six dimensions with that intention. Because the, the energy of that dimension is to let go, is to assist you in letting go. How you connect to six dimension, six dimension connect? How yeah. you connect? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's 64 inches. Oh, it's 64 inches. 64 inches or six dimension activate. And I would actually do a lot of the, um, you know, you know, three, three, um, nine, six, 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 nine, three. So get some, so do some breathing, put yourself in a meditative state and set the intention, do all of that. And, you know, uh, if you want to activate and do the, the soul energy and do some releasing of not mine and karma, that would make it easier that would and then and then um because when you do all of this it's actually especially when you're doing it on your own um like i know that there are some people they can say you know 64 inches activate boom they'll be there because they've done it so often or they've prepared themselves to in order to get into that state However, if you're not, um, you know, if you're not a constant practitioner, then you may need some leading up to make sure that you actually go in, you actually can reach six dimension. So do that soul cleansing process and then go to six dimension. And when you go to six dimension, um, what should you what should you say don't need to say anything just set the intention before you even go out because once uh -huh. you're there once you're there um once you're there it's actually no mind anymore so before you go set the intention and then you go there okay thank you thank you Vinny. so Vinny. Yeah. Yes, I, I that was too complicated. So I can't say I, I was like carefully paying attention to everything you were saying. I just uh, okay. couldn't, <laughs> couldn't concentrate tonight. But that self-sabotage theme is something that I thought that reoccurs in my life. 
or has been reoccurring in my life, not too often, but in certain phases, it was like I self-sabotaged success. I work for five years towards something, like on a long project for, with someone. And then at the end, I just mess up so badly that everything goes to waste. And then I start on something else, somewhere else, and build again, and then self-sabotage that too. So that kind of was reoccurrence in my life. So lately, um, I'm thinking that our thoughts are also self-sabotaged. And I do have examples that are real examples that cannot be denied. <laughs> then thought creates. So yeah, definitely the thoughts create. Not like you can pay attention to every thought you have, but some definitely do create unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, for self-sabotaging in this previous example, I thought it's kind of family karma. Like it, It's like if you reach the certain point and you go to the point to success, then, you know, war will happen or something else. <laughs> so you kind of stop before that happens. But it's kind of family karma. That, but thoughts are completely, like I was so excited <laughs> yesterday, I was going to phone you. Like thought comes so unexpectedly. And then... Uh, it comes true, but it's like something that you would never think regularly about that. It just appears for a few seconds and a few seconds, and it's not something that you think constantly. So then my question to you is, <laughs> so how do we control this <laughs> thinking process? I mean, that is kind of easier to control than, uh, than the theme you had tonight. So that's... Thinking is probably part of self-sabotaging too, <laughs> in a way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't have a question, but I, I, I have, you know, I. Yeah, I, I know. I, uh, I, uh, I talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> I talk too much, so that's why I didn't really leave much um, room for things however my intention is not to just you know cover self-sabotage for today and with that no it's I'm going to do a few more sessions with this so next week we're going to, to do more of um, a process yeah so that's a good that, idea because one evening is too much for it to absorb yeah, I know <laughs> it's you know it's it's a lot uh the self-sabotage and you're talking about you know creation process yes it's uh it's it's a lot of talk, so um, I I apologize. I should I should really try uh, put it in you know um, have it structured so that I talk less and really leave room more for process rather than. So you gave us overview. Mm -hmm. So next time you go part yeah. part part like yeah. breaking so the next time I'm gonna smaller sections it down even even smaller. However, mm -hmm. like even if you just use. The meditation that we did last week so that would be great already uh, last mm -hmm. thursday we did the one with you know we, we um release not mine we activate and then the karma release activate and then we tune the dna so dna actually is where all of these information are stored it's within the dna so when you do release and you tune your DNA, you start to um, work when you work with your soul. Your soul is the one that is in charge of communicating with all of these things. So right now, I know at least um, some of you has gone through you know, it, your, your lineage, at least. It may be not you personally have gone through, you know, lots of trauma. So because you with it's within your lineage so you so you it's kind of the, that pattern is in your it's within your soul that means that you can shift it like if it's if it's not within you you can't you can't affect something that that you don't even have 
And because it's within you, that's why you can shift it. So just doing the, the, the soul work can start to shift it. Okay, I'll, I'll go back to, to yeah. that. Yeah, do that. Do that. And also, um, you, you all know how to go to sixth dimension, right? <laughs> I asked that to you. <laughs> I just wanted you to start the process and uh, and activate it for us. It's okay. So yeah, it's it's very easy. So just you know, just give yourself just breathe, just you know, deep breathing in and out. Just give yourself this few minutes to just collect yourself, calm down, and get in touch with your body. Because your body is where you can interact with these energies. Three three nine six and six six nine three activate. Zero point activate. And set your intention. Before we go into the sixth dimension, let's set our intention. First intention is to set protection. To thirty nine inch activate. And then within your heart. Set the intention what do you want to let go off, to shift, to transform. When you go into the sixth dimension, set that intention. And once you set that intention, just let go. Trust that whatever it is that you're ready to let go of, the energies. In the sixth dimension will assist you. 64 inch activate.
Take a deep breath in. And just come all the way back. And open your eyes when you're ready.